Hello, welcome to my tutorial on learning SPSS. If you are new to using SPSS, this tutorial will be helpful to you. If you are a student and you want to learn how to use SPSS for the first time. Now, the first thing you need to do is to first install SPSS in your laptop. It's pretty easier. If you get the software and then install it into your laptop, then I'm going to teach you how you can use it in your own research work. So sometimes you may not really need to uh, struggle with doing that if you know the, the rudiments. Now, let us assume that this is a data that you have, um, the questionnaire, the Likert scale questionnaire that you have, and um, you want to use this to run analysis, okay? any part of analysis that you want to run. And let us assume that people have already marked these uh, questionnaire for you, and then you have either the hard copies or that you have the, the soft copy of the questionnaire. It does not really matter. What is most important is that you have the questionnaire that uh, you have used to collect data set. Now, this is a, a typical SPSS uh, uh, interface. Uh, but there are two things that I like to draw your attention to. Number one is that you have the data view and then you have the variable view. Okay, on the variable view, this is where you will write the names of the variables that you are um, that you intend to um, work with in your work. So, for example, if, uh, now that I have this i have entrepreneurship education and i have five and i have six items on entrepreneurship education okay so what i need to do is that i will come and name if i want i can simply say uh entrepreneurship entrepreneurship okay remember that if i give space here and write education SPSS, we have watch and see. It will say name, variable name contains an illegal character. So it does not accept you. It does not allow you, or will not allow you to leave space. So I'm going to write something like this entrepreneurship underscore education. Okay. So it's going to leave it now for me if that is what I want. So you can see it has created this for me. Now, I now know that this is entrepreneurship education. So I will come and code each of these items that I have now, assuming that people have already responded to these. Let us assume that they have already responded to these items here. Okay. So, and, and this is my item statement, one item statement, two, three, four, five, and six. So in my SPSS, I will add item item one because if i leave if i leave a state a space like this see it's not going to be possible so i'm going to add it item one and i will do item two and i'll do item three item four item five and item six Okay, so I have now created, I have now created room for the six items here that I have created, that I have used for data collection. And then the next thing is, if you come here, let, let without wasting much time, let us just do for these two, attitude towards behavior. Okay, now I can come here and write attitude underscore towards underscore behavior so that you will know where the data is is from you know where the data started so you can know that this is entrepreneurship education this is where you have the data the item statements okay and this is where this one also is going to start so this is how you are going to do it for all the variables in your work as mean you have you know all these variables that's exactly how you're going to do that as a beginner so we have items one to five here so 
um, in my SPSS, I'm going to create, let's say, uh, because I'm using item here, if I do item again, it's not going to allow me. So I can say attitude one, attitude two, which is item statement two, under the attitude towards behavior attitude three, attitude three, I mean is this statement, this statement here, that is item statement three, attitude four, attitude five. I hope you understand that clearly now. So that is attitude four and then and then attitude five. Okay, so I've got I've coded the items that I want here. If you have gender in your work, okay, you can put gender, which would be male and female. You can put age, if you have age brackets, let's say 20 to 25, 25 to 30, 35 to 40, as the case may be, whatever you, you, you want to code. Now, I like I like keeping my work, my own, um, um, my analysis at zero decimal. Okay, it's, it's just your choice. If you want, you can leave it at two decimal places. Um, yeah. I like when I write one, then my Y will be one instead of 1.0. Um, yeah. Okay. So I can simply insert zero or I can simply use this button to check. Okay. So remember that as it is right now, now this is the variable view so this is where i am writing the variables this is where i'm, I'm writing the variables okay but there's another part which is the data view this variable views goes horizontally horizontally you write like this like this like this like this but the data view goes vertically okay you can see vertically okay so now the next thing is, if I want to insert, if I want to now write exactly, if I want to put the the labels, okay, first of all, I may want to save, okay? So let me just save and say tutorial, okay? I can just send, send it anywhere in, in my work. Okay, so SPSS has now saved what I'm doing. So in your own analysis, you should be able to save that. Now, the item statement number one here says, so I will come and paste it here. Okay, so it's going to enter there. Yeah, so you can you can always draw this draw this to to enable you see the okay to enable you see the item statements now. So the second one. I'm going to copy, can paste. See the second one, the third one. But if you are already, if you are no longer new to SPSS, you may not need to do these things because you already understand. You already know the variable, the item statements, what they mean. You already know that item four mean this so you may not need to now impute it again into the labels okay but for people for students who are new i have to do this to explain to them how to do it and then i paste okay then i copy this item statement six and then i paste here Okay, now the same thing applicable to the other one, attitude towards behavior. These are the this is the item statement for number one, which is attitude one. Pest. I will do something here, and then I will pest. I will do something here. I will pest. I'll copy this control C and I'll paste and I'll copy the last one I 
and paste so you can see that i have brought in all the item statements all the statements the more you draw this it gives you opportunity to see the the item so i can just draw it a little closer like this now the next thing is to go to the values okay because we are using a five point like at scale so i will have to instruct the spss tell the spss what the responses mean if someone clicks one if someone click one here if someone say strongly i agree you know this is five points this is four this is three this is two and this is one so if anyone assuming that one of the respondents here said let's say here that somebody said well i strongly agree five point and here uh i am undecided here i don't want to talk and then here someone say two and then here someone say uh, strongly some uh, strongly agree now i hope you understand you, you know what this this response is so if someone marked this it means five if someone marked this it means three points if someone marked this mean one point and if they mark this again it means five points so you need to tell spss what these things mean so i will i will put the value i will say value of five and i will give S spss i'll let the spss know the value of five is strongly agree. I'll put it here. Four, I will tell SPSS that it, it means agree. And three, I will tell SPSS that it means uh, that the author, that the respondent is undecided, okay? Or neutral, so you can say undecided or neutral. And then two, that this is, uh, is, is disagree, disagree. And then one, which is, strongly disagree okay and then i will say okay now the moment you put that so you can see that spss is now aware of what you are saying so i can now copy this and then paste okay copy and paste paste it now even if you are not using strongly agree let us assume that in this case that i have uh assuming that i say here five is always okay as mean you're not using strongly agree four can be mostly okay let's say somehow somehow always okay can use anything anything can be used to respond to your your survey i can say neutral here as three Two can be uh, not always, for example, one can be never, anything you add. Once you tell SPSS this, SPSS will automatically know and then you can use it to, um, um, you can now copy it and paste and paste, okay? Okay. Now remember that here I just needed to change this. This is this this here strongly agree to strongly disagree was used. But I'm just trying. What I did here was just to let you know that you can actually use any rating scale at all and instruct the SPSS and the SPSS we know what you have to. So when you code the SPSS, we know that you have done that. And this is about gender. You can this can be what is your gender. Okay, and then the person might you now instruct SPSS that anybody that marked one means that the person is a male, and then anybody that marked two means that the person is a female. Okay, and then you click OK. And same thing applicable here. What is your age? Okay, and then you can tell SPSS that anyone that says uh, one means that the person is within the ages of 20 uh to 30 years old okay and then anybody that marks two means that the person is from 31 to 40 years old so so this is as the as you want right so feel free to instruct the sps so you can see from the variable view now i have coded very well then the next thing is that if i want i can come here and put all these things on the scale okay but again i like to tell you that from experience whether you have whether you put this on scale or you do not 
it cannot stop your analysis from running no it cannot right uh -huh. so that shouldn't be um, a problem if if you if you do not uh fix this that's that's not a problem and then as you do you try to save now let me take you to the data view the data view so you can see in the data view this is where you now need to start coding your your analysis so assuming that here now that someone marked uh let's say this person marked three and this person marked uh, <laughs> so this is this, this person says strongly agree so i will come to my spss and 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 then i will say uh five okay to item one that is for the first person the first person the first person the first respondent in this in this so as mean that you use 200 so this is it's going to be when you are done coding for the first person you pick the next person right and code and then to the the second item statement the person marked three undecided so you go to the second item statement three and then the, the person says strongly agree on the third and then i mark five the person says undecided the fourth item so i'm going to code three and the person said on the fifth one disagreeing which is two then i'll go to item statement five and then i'll code two and then uh the same thing applicable to item statement c which is five strongly agree so this is how you will do it when you are done coding for this person you pick the next respondent that is the next the next questionnaire item that you have the next questionnaire survey document that you have used to collect supposing you collected manually if you've collected your data using online approach probably like google form you can check out my video on google form down below the, the description box then it, it is the next respondent when you're done with this this one two three four five six seven eight nine ten means that 10 persons responded if you have coded to 10 it means that 10 persons have responded to your to your question uh, to your uh, questionnaire right and then let me say that here that this person happened to be uh, re uh, marked one and that this person marked two here let now you come to this point and value labels and click on it that will give you an idea of what has been done here so you can see that this person strongly agreed you can see that this person strongly agreed this person was undecided and it, so so assuming that 20 persons responded so you're going to code from here to 20 so this is how you're going to code okay and so when you are done coding then the next thing is when you are done coding the next thing is that if you want to run any analysis this is analyze you click here these any of these things you click spss we run them from the analysis whether correlation whether regression um uh, whatever that you want okay um, um spss is going to do that want to compare mean like independent sample t-test means uh, pair sample sample t-test one way ANOVA, and so on and so forth spss we uh will be able to do that for you okay so so thank you so much and and um so the next video that you can find which is already in the description box is how you can conduct for example uh descriptive statistics a multiple linear regression depending on the type of uh, uh work research you are conducting